Good morning. Good morning. It's probably lunchtime actually. Good afternoon. Uh, I thought I would come up on deck and have a chat to you guys up here because it is warm and sunny and it feels like it hasn't been warm and sunny in ages. Uh, it's February 2021. We are still in a state of lockdown. In fact, we've just had the South African variant of this virus rock up here. So everyone's on hyper high alert and everyone's being tested um, rigorously at the moment. So uh, everyone seems a bit more nervous than they did a couple of weeks back. But I understand that vitamin D is apparently meant to help in the fight against Corona. So I'm here basking like a, like a salamander whilst talking to you guys and doing my best to multitask. Since we're talking about sun, solar was actually gonna be the topic of conversation today. I was originally gonna do a much more detailed DIY solar panel installation video. However, a lot of things have changed uh, since this lockdown. We've been doing all sorts of electrical work to the boat. And I'm gonna talk to you about this video in the broad strokes of what we did solar upgrade wise. But this is gonna form part of a larger multi-part video where we're gonna talk about um, building our own lithium battery banks because we've had a bit of a change of plan. We've got a couple of bad batteries and um, yeah, we wanna try and reduce the weight on the boat and you know, space is a premium and those uh, lead acid batteries. We've got 800 amp hours on the boat. We've got the eight heavy batteries all sat on one side of the boat. It's a bit lopsided, takes up lots of space. We wanna get rid of it, basically. Power generation, uh, changing our cooking system from gas to electric and just as I say, what did we do and what are we doing in order to build our own system as cost effectively uh, as we can and that can sometimes be a difficult one to juggle. I'm going to run you through what we started with when we bought the boat, the changes we've made, the thought process that went into why we made the changes we did. Anyway, come, come check it out. All right, so when we bought the boat uh, it had 400 watts of solar originally when we bought it up on this beautiful solar arch and uh, that was fine all the time we weren't going anywhere particularly far or uh, you know asking too much of the the system itself but then we thought to ourselves ultimately you know what's the plan what do we want to do and and the, and the big picture plan is we want to be as 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 as, as independent as we possibly can as self-sufficient as we can and uh, yeah so that meant as much power as possible, storing as much of that power as possible, and as I say, ridding ourselves of as many reasons uh, as we can for having to go into marinas and into shore. So currently, this is, this is the sort of the set at the moment. In order to run you through some of the work that I did to it, I'm gonna to have to take you back in time through various states of hair and beard growth. So it's gonna look a bit long hair, short hair, long hair, beard all over the shop, but I'll run you through the thought process. But the, the, the reality is, right, you've got a couple of types of people. The, probably the better type of person to do this would be someone that calculates their entire boat system, power, demands, and then probably does some more calculations to figure out what sort of solar panels they need, and then they'll probably do even more calculations to work out the back. What I did was kind of like a, uh, a slightly less labor, mentally intensive version of that. I just thought how much how much, how much real estate do we have on the boat that we could possibly put some solar panels in? And how much space do we have to store batteries? And let's just put as many batteries in as we can, as much solar as we can, and let's see how it goes. That was, that's, that was it, that's if I'm honest. So we put two additional solar panels on. I'm gonna run you through that, but just before I do, let me just run you through some of the things that people have had questions, like how, how did you mount them? Where did you get the bits from? Well, it's that kind of stuff. How do you tilt them? And just, just okay, so here we go. Here are the panels themselves, two 175 watt panels to complement our 400 watt. Um, the first thing I needed to do um, was acquire a stainless steel bar to fit them to and then I needed a bracket to connect the stainless steel bar to the stanchions and this little T bracket here I bought from a company called C screw and I will pop the link uh, in a description so you can find them yourself again we're not affiliated with them or anything I just thought they were super handy the lifeline here is changing this this whole stanchion is actually gonna change we're gonna have like a little gateway here so the lifelines are actually gonna um, the guardrail, sorry, are actually going to end here. And uh, just for anything, things that's a bit sketchy, because that is a bit sketchy. We bought this little clamping device here from Force 4, which then just has two bars that run off, and you can, you can either screw these to the aluminium case of the solar panel or rivet them. And uh, basically, yeah, you can tighten this up and loosen it to adjust the panel. Now, one of the issues we actually had here was the fact that we have very sort of narrow walkways. So most people with this bar would probably 
try and put it somewhere in the middle so you have this fairly even distribution of weight so that you can easily tilt the panel in any direction to capture the most amount of sun and then all you need to do is tighten this little clamp screw here at the bottom and it would hold it in place however because we had such narrow uh walkways if we'd had that over it would just be it wouldn't be it'd just be in the way so we've had to move up the our, the our connection point here which means that the lev the weight here from a leverage perspective is always trying to pull the panel down so in order to make sure that we can tilt the panel to capture you know the best rays of the sun and hold it in place all we've simply done is take a little line here just a line here that we drill a hole through the bottom of the aluminium case that just runs down onto a cleat or whatever you want to tie it to and then you can as i say you can slacken it off and lower it down or tighten it up and lift the panel up Okay, I thought I'd do this outside today. We've been dealing with a company in Worthing called Sunstore. Uh, we're not affiliated with them at all, they're not sponsoring this, but they have been brilliant. Especially because we've obviously had the COVID-19, the lockdown, and so we haven't been able to actually face-to-face -face have one of them come over to do the install or us go to see them. But the guy, Curtis, is the guy I've been dealing with, and he's been an absolute legend. And all of my really stupid questions, because I have zero experience in still in anything, he's been really good coming back to me. And he put a package together of everything that he thought I would need, everything from fuses, wiring, um, you know, connections, silicone, everything. He just sent it in a box and said, this should be everything you need to get you going. I did do a very, very basic marine electrical course. Probably should have started off with something a bit easier. Maybe I should have installed a light or something, but I didn't. I decided to go straight to a solar install. So uh, this will be a test of that course. And was that money well spent? But before we get into that, let's have a look, see what's in the box, and uh, go from there. Okay, the first thing we have is a fairly decent amount of wiring. We've got 16 meters worth of uh, double insulated wiring. Second, we have not one, two MPPT 7510 charge controllers. We're gonna have one on each solar panel individually, so if anything happens to one of them, we don't lose a tremendous amount of our solar output potential. Uh, we have two, seems a little bit overkill. <laughs> We've got two tubes of some sort of silicone sealant, I guess for the gland that goes through the, the hull. I'm not sure if I'll use that or not. Uh, we have a little bag here with little bits. So we've got a couple of fuses, um, some ends, some screws, and various bits. Uh, and we have some MC4 connections for the solar panels. Uh, inline fuses, or inline fuse holder, I'm guessing. And then we have some instructions. So as I say, that's the company there, Sunstore. I will, uh, I'll pop a link in the description. And as I say, if you speak to a guy called Curtis, he's the owner of the company and he has been he has been an absolute legend so far. So first things first, I'm just gonna try and lay the wire and then the rest of the install I can do at a later date when uh, I put everything back together again. Let me show you some of this chaos on board while Dominic is trying to lay these solar wires. It's, <laughs> yeah, let me show you. This is one our cabin. Fills into the brim. Outside the cockpit. How can, how can just putting two wires in a boat, just all we're doing today is two wires, make this much of a mess? Or palava. <laughs> That's it, I suppose, a DIY solar installation, saving some money, but there's a little bit of me now that's kind of almost wishing that we'd paid someone to install it, but I'm not gonna be defeated. <laughs> not gonna be defeated. 
Yeah. This is this here. You probably can't see it, but this is roughly where we're going to come out and join to the solar panel. It's going to come all the way back down here, under here, through the engine bay, under the bilge, and hopefully we've got just about enough of this wire left to make that connection. And then I'm going to put the boat back together and finish all the fiddly little bits off on another day because this is taking longer than I thought it would take. It's dinner time. It is dinner time. It's dinner time, dinner time, time. Yeah. It is day two of the solar installation challenge. I feel like it's a challenge. And I've got my instructions from the ever so helpful Sun Store. Now, yesterday we had all kinds of palaver tearing the boat apart, getting the cables laid. Now they are where I want them to be. The next thing we need to do is mount the charge controllers, which we have two of. Yeah, Victron MPPT solar charge controllers. And according to the instructions, all it says here is they need to be ideally within one meter of the battery. So, look at the state of my hair. I look like something out of a, there is such a thing as a 80s glam rock ginger band. Like maybe, maybe there was a Celtic glam rock band that I just never heard of. Maybe I could have been like, anyway. So uh, I've just mounted the charge controllers. Well, that bit was fairly easy. And again, just reading the instructions here, they seem fairly straightforward. Um, I'm just gonna have to now cut back some of the insulation on the wire. I'm gonna expose five centimeters of the outer sheath and then I'm gonna now strip back five millimeters of each put a couple of pin terminals on the end which I've got my little bag of stuff because all of this stuff came in a kit which is really handy it means I don't have to think too much and given how little experience I have in anything electrical that's a good thing um, I'm guessing that is the pin terminal and that is going to go onto the end of the wires and that will go up into the MPP controllers from the solar panel. So the solar will send along the wire we've installed the power and that's going to get to the MPP controllers. The controllers are then going to regulate that power and get it all sort of in and around the 12 volt range and that's then going to feed down into, I'm actually, I'm not going to feed it directly into the batteries but I'm going to go from the charge controller into a bus bar because I've got, I say, a couple of controllers. So I'm going to the positives into a bus bar, the negatives into a bus bar, and then from there, I'm going the positive line is going to go off to the battery, and then um, the negative is going to go from the negative bus bar through to the shunt. I'll show you what the shunt is in a second, and that's going to give us all our readings and understanding what our system is doing. And it seems fairly straightforward so far, but. Let's see, let's see. Welcome back to present day. Present day, actually, in February. It's February 2021 and it feels more like July, um, but I just wanted to bring you up to speed. As I say, this was never intended to be a how-to video, how video. This is a more of a how, do, how, how we get on video. And everything that we bought was dead easy to, to install. The instructions were really straightforward. They were, dare I say, idiot-proof. And everything's up and running. It's all working. Power's coming in from all the new solar panels and the charge controllers are working well. And as you can see, at the moment, we're in the middle of an electrical refit anyway. So the boat, um, we broke the back of it, but there's still a lot more to do. Because the weather's so lovely, it would be a beautiful day to go out for a sail. But as I say, the boat's not quite ready to do that. Who, who saw a mini heat wave coming in February? We are in a state of national lockdown still, but we are also allowed to go sailing as part of our exercise routine. So I think this little taste, this little mini heat wave we're having right now is giving us the motivation to get everything ship shape so we can pop out, you know, if as and when we get another one of these beautiful days. 
Carly's just making her wares. She's putting the leads and the, the dog collars together from the old ropes. She's washing all the lines and cutting them all up and making them and putting them in her shop. If you haven't seen her shop, I'll pop the links in the description. But as I say, this video is a precursor for our overall power system upgrade, which is going to be fairly extensive, both with um, all the new wiring, but also with the, um, the implementation of lithium as opposed to our lead acid batteries. And we're going to look to go electric with our cooking and, and, and be gone with the gas. That is the plan. That's the broad strokes plan, but it's going to be really interesting because we're, we're building our own system with some help from the mad scientist in the marina. And uh, yeah, really looking forward to getting those videos put together and getting the boat put back together so we can head off as and when these restrictions get lifted more permanently. Fingers crossed that won't be too long now. Anyway, hope you're all staying safe, staying well. And um, you know, if you're, if you're in the UK and you're experiencing this weather, I hope you managed to get out and enjoy it as best you can. Anyway, we'll speak to you soon. Bye for now.